video is going to be a short little video that I made just to show a, um, a measuring issue I had on the part that I showed in my last week's video. On uh, it's there's a groove way up inside the part. There's an inch and three eighths bore up in there, and then there's a groove that I, I think it's for a snap ring or something. I don't know, but it's a 16th inch wide groove that's 1.457 in diameter plus or minus five thousandths, and. Uh, I didn't really have a good way to measure that. Now I looked in catalogs and such and I found this Mueller gauge that uh, I think they're out in California and they make this, these gauges. I have a small one and I'm happy with the way it works so I called them and they had like a six week lead time on this gauge and it cost well, I think around $1,700 with the appropriate tips that I would need to reach back in there and I couldn't wait that long a period of time. so. I had to think of something and I had a few things around the shop uh, that I maybe could use and so that's this video is going to show how I solved this issue with measuring this uh, groove back up in there in the part. Here's the part in the CAD software showing the groove that I have to measure. It's way up inside this uh, bore back um, I think it's almost 14 inches back from the face of the part so I have to reach up in there with something and measure it and I was trying to think of something to use for this so at first I I thought I would take this um I think it's called an indicoil coil or indical or something like that and I would make something to mount this uh interrapid dial indicator on there so that I could read it from the you know looking up in the bore but I would also need to make a an handle and, and, and of course a mount for the indicator and some way to depress the gauge together to get it up in there. So I ended up with this idea. I had this dial indicator, this um, measuring caliper, uh, dial caliper thing I think they call it. And I uh, thought, well if that would get up in the bore I could probably use that. And in fact it does, I, I can get it up inside the part and measure the groove but but of course I can't read the dial on the thing so uh, here here I'm showing just how I can stick it up in the I, I put the image in the CAD software up on the screen the big screen and scaled it just about the size that it really is and you can see that the indicator gets up in the groove alright and, and it actually won't even hit that lever on the bore when you have it in the groove so that that worked pretty good and I could feel it up in there pretty good so now I needed to make something that I could uh, actually see the the indicator with and I have the I had this other kind of inexpensive borescope deal with a video display on it and I thought if I could mate the two things together somehow make it so I could read this indicator so I, I drew this little uh, model up in the CAD software of what I thought might work that would fit on the dial indicator of the of the um, the midatoyal caliper thing and uh, there was also a bushing I had to make to adapt a mirror I couldn't get a mirror that would fit on the end of that bore scope so I had to adapt one to this diameter and have this bushing to adapt the bore scope itself to the um, hole. Here's the, in, in Cura the models because I, I actually printed both of these on, on a 3D printer that I have. So I converted them to STL files and then imported them into Cura and here's the I'm just scanning up and down the layers of the models so then here's a few scenes of them being printed out on the printer I started this one this part pretty close to quitting time so I, I got most of it but it had about I don't know an hour to go before it finished so I unfortunately didn't get the very last little part of this being printed but this is the way I did it. I printed both the parts on the 3D printer and I had to, you know, trim them a little bit and I think I ran a reamer up the hole on this part so that the bushing thing would fit into it. This thing here. And uh, 
a drill or reamer up the middle hole so the bore scope would fit nicely up in there. Then I put them together and adjusted the mirror and the scope so that I could see the display on the indicator, the dial indicator. So this is the, the part after the two pieces are glued together with the mirror and, and the bore scope in there and the bore scope light on. And it just snaps on the top of the, the dial indicator here and friction is enough to hold it on there. And you can see on the, on the display on the bore scope here in a second you can see the needles as they go by. And the, the, the image in the lower left hand corner is actually me measuring the groove on one of the parts so that was before it was a little undersized and then I reran the grooving tool and measured it again and this is the dimension I'm looking for um, 1.457 I think plus or minus 5,000 so it's not a real close tolerance so this worked perfectly good so this was my solution to being able to measure that groove way back in there in the bore